have been neglecting my personal collection of books. And I feel so, so guilty every time I reach for another borrowed library book or book from Libby or Kindle Unlimited book. And so in order to combat that, we're gonna talk about the 15 books from my personal library that I'll be prioritizing this fall. There is a running theme amongst these books. You will see that 95% of them are book of the month selections from previous years that I just haven't gotten to because for whatever reason, my brain is like, collect the books, but don't read them. We're gonna read them now. We're gonna read them finally. We're gonna start with the thrillers because you know your girl is a thriller girly and that is what most of my book of the month books are. I find like the best thrillers through book of the month and sometimes the worst thrillers through book of the month but I still go for them every time and that means that I've amassed a majority of my book of the month collection that are thrillers. So let's talk about the thrillers first and then we'll go through general fiction and romance. 10 thrillers, five general fiction and romance, like kind of collectively. Way back in March of 2022, I grabbed Simone St. James, The Book of Cold Cases, which follows this woman who's like a receptionist by day, true crime blogger by night. And we're gonna see her as she's interviewing two women who were acquitted of murder back in the 70s and follow along like in 2017. Now, I wanna say that from memory like of reading other Simone St. James books that it kind of bounces back and forth between past and present and that is one aspect of her writing that I really really enjoy so I am very excited. I've read The Broken Girls by Simone St. James and also The Sundown Motel and I want to say that both of them I gave at least four stars to so I know that I like her writing. I've just neglected to get to her and I don't I don't know why I don't know why but I am very excited to read this. This was the first book that I pulled off of the shelf when I was like, let's pick out these books for fall. I see so much buzz about Stacey Willingham online and I do have two of their books. So we are going to go with A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This one from what I've read, and I don't like to read too much about the books that I am going to be reading because that's just not me. This one sounds like it follows a woman who as she's growing up, there are a bunch of teens that go missing. And then we kind of flash forward to her getting ready for her wedding and another teen has gone missing. I like books that have therapists as like a main character and I know, yeah, Chloe is a psychologist who's getting ready for her wedding. So I know that this one follows a psychologist and I am very, very excited to read this. I've also, to knowledge, like in reflection, not read any books that are set in Louisiana. So I'm very excited to get into this. That was a December 2021 selection that I made way, way long ago. If you know me and you've watched this channel at all, you you know that I also really love Lisa Jewell's writing and I picked a couple of her books I'm pretty sure for this. The one that I am perhaps the most excited to read is Invisible Girl. This was, I don't even know, this is just, it says thrills and chills on the back so I think that this was an add-on for me. It is about a man who is living with his aunt, he's still a virgin in his 30s and he's just been suspended from his teaching job for allegations of sexual misconduct and it sounds like it's gonna follow him and his neighbors who think that there's something very, very wrong with him. I think that Lisa Jewell writes really creepy male characters. I literally can't wait to read this. And again, I don't know why I've neglected to read all of these, aside from the fact that I've just been obsessed with my Kindle. So yeah, Lisa Jewell, Invisible Girl, is also going on the list. A while ago, a very long while ago, my children's grandmother told me that I needed to read this book by Alex North. And I bought it in August of 2019 from Book of the Month. It is about a man who is convicted of being a serial killer and he's deemed the Whisper Man because he would lure his victims out of their rooms by whispering at them at night. So we're following our main character, Tom, and his son, Jake, after the death of Tom's wife. And it seems like the Whisper Man is back in town. So this is the Whisper Man by Alex North. I read the Chestnut Man. Did he write the Chestnut Man? No, he did not write the Chestnut Man. I know I've read an Alex North book before. What else did he write? I know I read one by him. Oh my gosh. Okay, 
I know that I've read an Alex North book before, unless I'm just absolutely crazy. So I read The Shadows by Alex North a really long time ago, and I gave it four stars. But somehow, even though people have told me to read The Whisper Man, I have not read The Whisper Man. So I think that my children's grandma told me that this was better than The Shadows, and I can't fathom how if I gave The Shadows four stars. So we're gonna read it, and I'm gonna let you know if it's as good as what I thought The Shadows was. But yeah, this one sounds so creepy and perfect for October, so I'm very, very, very excited to get into it. Now, one of the libraries that's near me has a secondhand shop, and they do bag days, where you can fill an entire bag with books, and it's $5. And when I went for this bag sale, I remember I found so many Book of the Month selections in their shelf, and I managed to find so many of them and get so many for like less than a quarter each, and it was like the best day of book shopping I've had. And I found this book, which is called The Possessions. It is a February of 2017 book, and this was before, I think before I was even a subscriber to the Book of the Month. So this one is about a private service that allows grieving clients to reconnect with lost loved ones. And that's all that I read into this book because I was like, I don't wanna read too much into the synopsis to like figure out what's going to happen in this book. All I needed to know was it's about women who take on the bodies of lost loved ones. And I was like, I'm sold, good enough for me. This is by Sarah Flannery Murphy. And this is an author that I have not heard from. I'm excited to try somebody new in with all the authors that I know that I love. I also have a bunch of books by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pecknin that I have not read. And so I was like, we're gonna take another one of their books off of my TBR shelf. And we're gonna read The Wife Between Us, which I wanna say one of my friends read and told me that she really liked it. So when you read this book, you will make many assumptions. You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she is obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who is about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle. Assume nothing. Twisted and deliciously chilling, the wife between us deftly explores the hidden complexities of marriage and the dangerous truths we ignore in the name of love. Read between the lies. I really love this author duo. Perhaps I would wager to say that they are one of my favorite author duos. I have loved literally every single book that I've read by them. And so I am very, very excited to read this one. I think that this one sounds better than any of the others that I've read. So very, very excited. And this one is from December of 2017. And again, I don't know if I bought this in December of 2017 or if I picked it as an add-on or if I found it at that library, I don't know. We have a November 2020 selection. You watched me add this to my library. So it's not exactly been sitting on my shelf for a long time. When I grabbed it, I was like, I have to read that soon. So this is Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. And literally I just based it off of there's more than one way to end a marriage. This one seems pretty hefty, but I am hopeful that I can read it in like a weekend when I have the time. Again, not really caring what it's about. This is just something that sounds great. It sounds great just from that line. Yeah, so. There's that. We have, well actually, that's the last of the books that I got from Book of the Month for Thriller. So then I just kind of went through and grabbed other miscellaneous thrillers that are sitting on my shelf or have been sitting on my shelf for a while. There is one exception again in here. We have Watching You by Lisa Jewell. I know that a lot of people talk about this being their very favorite Lisa Jewell novel. And I also know that it's about an uppity neighborhood where everybody has secrets, but there's always someone watching and and like being nosy. And I love a good nosy neighbor trope. We're gonna get into the nosy neighbor trope with watching you. Okay, I don't know if this is like hyperbolic or not, but this is like watching you will keep you guessing until the startling revelation on the very last page. So I really am intrigued to see if it is gonna be as shocking as it's made out to be. Everybody knows I love Lisa Jewell, so I'm bound to like this. She just licked all of my books. Okay, very long time ago, when I first signed up for Book of the Month, I read a book by Sarah Pinneborough, which is called Cross Her Heart. And I found that book to be incredible. This is when I very first started out with reading thrillers. So I really, really didn't have very much experience reading thrillers. And I, I love that book. So I bought Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinneborough a very long time ago because my children's grandmother recommended it for me. And so so I was like, okay, well, I need to get it. And then it just sat on my shelf 
for a very long time waiting for me to get to it. This one's gonna follow a single mom who works as a secretary and is stuck in a rut. On a night out, she meets a man, as you do, and it says she's thrilled to finally be connected to somebody. And as it turns out, on Monday when she goes to work, she finds out that that man is her new boss. I'm not gonna read too much more into this, but I am going to but I am going to read this book and let you know how it is in comparison to Cross Her Heart. The co-host wants to sit on my lap and I don't want her to because she's heavy and she's gonna just do this the whole time. Okay, all right, moving on. If you watched my last video, which was my secondhand bookshop, you're gonna know that this book is one that I've been very excited to read. I just hadn't purchased it yet. And that's The Therapist by B.A. Paris. I read one B.A. Paris book and I was like, I need to read every book that this author has written. So I read Behind Closed Doors and then I was like, okay, great, that was so wonderful. Now I need to read some more because I personally feel like B.A. Paris has written one of the most fucked up books that I've ever read in my life, Behind Closed Doors being that book and so, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that the therapist will keep on trend with being super messed up. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, this one, I don't know how to give a succinct synopsis, but looking on the inside of this, I'm very excited to tell you all that Jane Corey has um, a little blurb on the inside jacket, and that makes me excited because Jane Corey is a recently discovered author that I love. A delicious web of lies, Jane Corey, best-selling author of My Husband's Wife. I should have put that book on this list too, to be honest, but this is the last thriller. We're moving into the general fiction and I really don't know how to succinctly summarize the book that I'm about to talk about. So I'm just going to show it to you and explain why I picked it up off of my shelf. So we have As Long As Lemon Trees Grow. This was a book that I got in October of 2022. It is not something that I would normally reach for because in reading the inside jacket of this, it is a book that is 100% certain to make me cry. Very similar to things like And the Mountains Echoed and The Kite Runner is what I, is what I want to say comparatively speaking. And the mountains echoed. I freaking bawled my eyes out when I read that book and I listened to the audio and it was so incredible. So I don't know how to summarize this, but I want to read it because sometimes, like I've said before, I just need a book that's going to make me cry. And I'm not gonna say anything else about this aside from the fact that it's set in Syria during times of war. And that's all that I, I need to know. I, I feel bad because I don't know how to summarize it without just reading the entire front cover, but I will for sure talk about it once I'm done. We have what everybody on the internet is deeming dark academia. I read Ninth House so long ago. So long ago, I probably should reread Ninth House before I pick up the next book, but I'm not going to because I think that I remember n enough about Alex's story to proceed forward with Hellbent. I think that this one's been sitting on my shelf for so long since January of this year because she's thick and I get nervous with thick books because my little arms are gonna get tired holding it. But that's why I have my book seat. Hellbent is gonna follow Alex Stern along her journey to figure out what the fuck happened to Darlington. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to figure out what happened to Darlington, except for when I saw this book, I was like, okay, just kidding. I can wait a little bit longer to figure out what happened to Darlington. I think that this is gonna be good for like November, um, just in time for my birthday to read this book. And then I can sit here and hopefully there's not another cliffhanger like freaking ninth house and then the last one is another one that i've seen a ton of buzz about on the internet and it makes me a little nervous because i know that there's going to be like content warnings that i need to check for exploring the psychological dynamics of the relationship between a precocious yet naive teenage girl and her magnetic and manipulative teacher a brilliant all-consuming read that marks the explosive debut of an extraordinary new writer to me it's giving pretty little lies it's giving Aria and Ezra. It's giving inappropriate, but we're gonna read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell in the fall because it seems terrible and it seems like something to get me just right in the mood to read all the happy and fuzzies for Christmas. Yeah. I've seen so much about this on the internet. I literally did not. This was an add-on because as you can see on the back right here, it just says 
contemporary fiction. This is one that I just added on because everybody was talking about it and I was jealous and I needed to know too. So my dark Vanessa. And that's it for like the general fiction. We're gonna talk about romance next. One of them. You give her a little tiny bit of attention and then she's just back for more and more. I do only have two romances for you. One of them is a book of the month selection and one of them is one that I was like, you're coming home with me at Target one day and my husband didn't fight me on it. So let's talk about the book of the month first. This is my newest book of the month from September. It is an Enemies to Lovers which I've loved Enemies to Lovers since I read The Hating Game way, way long ago. When Ari and Josh first meet, the wrong kind of sparks fly. They hate each other instantly. And so we are gonna pick up Kate Goldbeck's You Again. I am so excited. It's like, is it fake dating too? No, it's friends to lovers, but also enemies to lovers. I am very confused. Okay, this blurb is enough for me besides the they hate each other instantly. Turns out spending time with your former ne nemesis is fun when you're too sad to hate each other and too sad for hate sex. You again, sounds like it's gonna be like an enemies to lovers kind of situation. But then in reading the cover a little bit more, it also sounds like we're gonna get a little bit of enemies to friends to lovers, which I am here for. I've never read a Kate Goldbeck before, so this will be another new romance author for me. I don't know if this is a debut or not, but I've never read Kate Goldbeck before, so I'm very excited to get into this, even though it is also pretty hefty for a romance. The last book that I have to talk about today, I saw at Target and I was like, ooh, yes, you're gonna come home with me because I've heard really great things and also because I love Christina Lauren's writing together so, 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 so much. They are, of course, my favorite romance author duo. And so we've got Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. My cousin talked about this as a book that made her cry a lot. And I like to test the limits and see if I'm gonna make myself cry too. I never really go into Christina Lauren books knowing what they're about. So I'm not gonna read anything into this. I just am excited to read it. I need to wrap this up because my dog demands my attention. So again, we're not talking a TBR for this fall. This is just books that I'm hopeful to get to. There be other books of course that I read as well as these because 15 books is not gonna be enough for three months for me because I am on track right now it's still September as I'm filming this and I've read 10 books already and there's still at least a week to go so there's something to be said for children who go to bed at 7 p.m. on school nights and a husband being on deployment I've been reading so so much and I'm really having fun talking about everything that I'm reading on the internet and talking about what I want to read and showing you all how fun it is to film with a nine month old puppy who just wants to be on your lap at all times. All right, so those are the 15 books that I am prioritizing this fall. I want to know if there's anything that I've pulled that's maybe on your list that you want to read or if there's anything that I've pulled that you've already read. If you have reviews on anything, send me towards your reviews so I can watch or read or whatever or leave me a comment with your review on any of the books that I've mentioned if you've read them. That's gonna be it for me for today. Dog hair all over me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We are really surpassing what I thought this channel was gonna do. So I'm really having fun. Anyway, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me comments and all that fun stuff. I really like talking to you guys down in those comments. Otherwise, we are out. I'm gonna go organize these books onto a TBR shelf and then I'm gonna get to reading because I haven't read yet today and I need to. But I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.